Welcome back everyone. Today I have another video and today we're doing uh, Luffy. Um, they really got new upgrades for this new format. So I did wanted to um, go over the new cards and uh, like how the deck plays now. Uh, the big changes that it got definitely was the Luffy. Uh, Luffy Taru being able to play a, a, a Straw Hat from the hand. Uh, the best targets are Zoro and, San, and Sanjuro. Usually you want to go first, so you can do Zoro first, then you go Luffy into Sanji, and then you start gaming from there. You can go 9-drop Lin Lin, you can go double Magellan, or Magellan into something else, and, and then you start gaming from there on. Or you do a second Luffy, very, very good. Now, why are we playing Magellan? Because going second, you can go Magellan into Luffy, and that's still a pretty decent curve. Um, definitely stifles the opponent a little bit, and then uh, you also have a, like a card that doesn't get removed easily, and then you get to play uh, your straw hop package like regular, right? Right. Linlin is very important for this strategy because it's very good ag against aggressive decks. Is how you win the aggressive matchups, and then uh, it also is just very good, a very good card in general. I think um, those are like the non counters that you play in the deck. Uh, I think so. And then you have some other blockers. This could be Queen as well. Uh, it doesn't have to be necessarily Kid. I just play it because it's searchable out of the uh, the Pirates. But it could just be Queen. Also a really good card here where you can draw. Uh, this could be this Sanju. It could be the Usopp. Uh, the one that taps down uh, a 4 or less. Uh, they both have utility in that end. Uh, but I also uh, like like kind of like front of suke because it's just like an attacker but um but it may be just not be like front of suke and you just play the uh the brook oh, another card that you could play but it doesn't have any counter is bon bonus kishi which is really good against cards like kid a drop kid which is a card that is going to be in the in the format so this is another option that i could see playing in the deck um because like the a drop kid is it could be a problem for this deck uh, you don't have that many answers for it and then this card being able to just minus it minus 2k and then we attack with everything uh could be the difference between winning or losing um but i mean it's it's hard to tell honestly it's, it's not that easy uh it's not that easy to fit and then have a consistent deck because i also want to play more of this card uh when you're fighting so you can find your zoros find your luffy's and then because your strongest curves definitely involve these two cards so it, I kind of want to have more cards of this one so you can search that more consistently. So there's a lot of cards that I want to add into the deck and I want to have consistency, but like it's hard to fit everything, right? Uh, I also play in Jinbei. I think Jinbei is just a good card to play out of the leader. It's, just, it's a blocker. It just helps you defend. This deck just really wants to have good defensive options because you're taking your, your own life like aggressively. So having a bunch of blockers is good in my opinion. So that's why I do uh, do that. I do have a lot of blockers in this deck. Uh, that's the reason why. Um, deck is very good. It definitely uh, it becomes really competitive right now. It will be more competitive next set, but at the moment I think uh, I don't see any bad at all with this anything bad at all with this deck. Uh, I think it can definitely be a tier one deck, and it can definitely compete in the uh, like in the highest uh, tables right now. I don't think there is a like a necessarily a bad matchup. Flamingo is difficult, sure, especially if they are going first. Um, you are gonna need some uh, Linlins to be able to survive that. But as long as you are able to just open some uh, Zoro, Lo Zoro Luffy and and have some blockers or have some defense, that's why I also play Blast Breath. Uh, it shouldn't be that terrible, but uh, it definitely could be a, a, a bad matchup for the, uh, for Flamingo. But like no deck is unfailable, no deck has no Connor, and um, I still think it's gonna be a really decent deck because of that. With that being said, uh, let's get some gameplay. All right, and we're gonna go against uh, Gecko Moria. This um, uh, this deck has not gained much lately, but that's a really interesting uh, car, Uda. It cannot be destroyed by the leader, uh, but I think it works pretty well with this Gecko because uh, you get turn two KO anything if you have an Absalom, uh, and then they cannot KO it back with the leader. That's pretty strong actually, unless they have a, like a one cause that they can attack it with. Um, I kind of agree with this. This is pretty nice, but an interesting tech, but he very very good actually. The only downside to this card is that it doesn't have any counter. But is it really a downside? Because um, 
I mean, it, it is a downside. Yeah, but you also get it back with Gecko, and it's a card that is gonna be hard to be removed as well. So, and having a con con consistent remove card uh, on two is pretty nice, especially on turn one. The problem is how many of this card do you play? More than one? I don't know. Interesting tech. I really liked it. Uh, in this game, we're gonna block, free block. We play the Jimbe. We don't have anything else. Uh, we do have the Luffy, which allows us to uh, play around this removal a little bit better. And I uh, suspected they, they have more removal. Um, I don't know if I want to kill the Absalom. Well, I do want to kill this Ura. He's being very obnoxious. Oh, but that's a really great draw right now. Uh, that changes everything. So I'm going to attack for five here. See if he lets it die. Because now I don't care if he lets it die. Uh, I will be attacking the Ura. Uh, the Ura, he can get it back with Gecko Moria. But not... N oh, yeah. Yes, next turn. But it doesn't do anything next turn. And uh, I'm going to be able to deal with this. So this is fine. This is uh, okay. Uh, what I discard? I think I discard the Frankie. It's fine. Put this guy into the bottom. Now, we haven't dealt too much damage. But the opponent hasn't. is not in control of the board at the moment. So it's fine. And if he plays a Gecko, it doesn't really do that much. And then we are able to play maybe a Luffy. And then we'll go from there, right? So, and then we have also the law. So eventually we can discard two cards out of their opponent's hand. So it's not, it's not, we're not in the, in the worst part at the moment. So I'm, I'm keeping my options open here with the law. See what I need. I can also just play law next turn, like on combination with everything. Now this is annoying. Uh, will he be able to remove anything? I don't think so. I don't think he, he has a, uh, the guy. No, he doesn't. So he could play just these two things and be an obnoxious about it. He's going to keep the Ura on top so I don't attack it. It has to be incorrect, right? Because then I can just attack this uh, blocker. I mean, I, he, he's, he wants the, the blocker. I mean, he wants the Ura so he can um, attack next turn. Still, it feels incorrect to do this, honestly. Like, the blocker is way more valuable than this removal, I think. Uh, I'm going to take full advantage of this, and I'm just going to discard one card uh, and draw more. The Sanji. Probably wasn't actually the Sanji. It was the other Sanji. I don't think I'm going to be playing that one. Unless we draw a, a third Luffy, but I don't I don't think that's going to happen. So, yeah, and we have more other cards that we can play. So, discarding the 2K counter probably wasn't correct. Uh, it was probably just the Sanji. Um, the Nami I did want to play because it's just a draw two and and it's a blocker. So if he wants to kill that one, okay. But then he doesn't kill anything else, and I still have the Jimbe blocker. So uh, we have good options here. Now, can he pressure me enough to put me low? Yes. Uh, he wouldn't be able to win. Per oh, yeah, actually, no, 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 because he has to tap two to do his thing. Uh, I will just block with the Nami because uh, why not, right? Like this Ura by itself doesn't remove anything. So he needs uh, something else plus the Ura. Okay, so he's going to do Perona to minus five. Something else, Zuru, and then KO the Big Mom. Yeah, it feels like it's too little, honestly. I would I would have kept the, the, the Zuru, would have gone after the draw or the Jimbe blocker this turn instead of the big mom uh let the big mom be whatever and just have me force me to have enough blockers or something uh, here to uh to survive right i think that would be the the better option i will remove this uh minus two because i don't know if he has more minus in effects in hand so if he does he has to show me oh we do have the luffy but we do have to play the blocker here um, which is fine. I did want to discard the Jimbe, see what I, what my options were. Uh, I still have two blockers, so I don't. I'm not. I don't think I'm uh, in that disadvantage at the moment. Uh, let's see if he has Connor in hand. He does. Uh, it'll be fine. Um, now let's see if he can go for game. It's possible. Um, some minus effect. Uh, the leader. And then attack, although I do have a lot of counter power. Um, so depending on how my opponent decides to attack, it should be fine. And then next turn, I should be able to go for game, hopefully. 
depending on how much he overextends uh, to do this play. So it's been a close game. It definitely not the best of our matchups because it's removal plus aggression. So uh, definitely a difficult one to um, overcome. But I think uh, I think we have a decent shot right now. The Luffy does help a lot against the black decks because them not being able to remove everything that you play uh, shows, right? Shows the, the difference between uh, all, all formats or, or f versions of the Luffy versus the new ones, right? Of course. Uh, seven. Uh, that's I'm, I'm easy. It's that's easy to Connor out. So I will be doing that. Another seven. Uh, yeah. I mean, I can just Connor out of that one too. No problem. Now I, I'm trying to just keep my Jinbei if possible. So if that's what I am able to keep, that's what I'm going to try to keep, of course. Now, he has very limited options here, depending on what he's got. Nine, I will block with the Nami. And then he's probably going to play a Sabo. A good option to draw here right now would be like another 10 drop big mom. Very, very good. Uh, he's not going to attack with Suru, so I can block. Top, uh, block, block. Block, give him a car. And then he goes Rebecca. And then gets a 2k Connor. So going for game is actually kind of risky. So I might not be doing that. Let's see what I draw. No, I, I probably cannot go for game. So I can just uh, go after his board. A second Blast Breath almost kind of guarantees me my survival here for next turn. Now, I do have two breaks, so maybe not so much. Attack for eight, eight. Um... Okay, we got the Nami or a 2k Connor. That's also good. Um, I could just attack the Gecko, force the block. And next turn, we're going for game either way. I could also just play... No, no, no I cannot play the Sanji. But just having two Blast Breath, I think, is good enough. I think my opponent will try to go for game with the Gecko. And... Um, and because we have the Blast Breaths, uh, he's not going to actually be able to go for game. He blocked, which is good for us, actually. Uh, I think he's going to try to remove my blocker and try to go for game. And I think that's what I want to happen. Because I do think I have enough for that. Depending on how, like, if he's, yeah, if he has to play four for this, uh, I think I do have enough uh, for, for this turn. If he has to remove the blocker this way. So this is just perfect. Uh, play right into our hand. Um, he goes nine. Okay, I go blast breath one k, and then get Komoria for nine blast breath one k. Uh, I don't think there there is a way that he could have divided the attacks and uh, and still won that one. And then this turn I have uh, four attacks, good enough to win the game here. Five attacks actually, that's more than enough to win the game here. All right, let's go against the uh, one of the decks of the format, uh, the Boogeyman, if you may. We're going second, which definitely they should take first out of Luffy, but they don't have anything, and he's gonna play the the, the Mihawk, so he does get lucky out of that. Uh, matters not actually. Take a life. Uh, we're gonna play the Zoro. I think that's good still. Uh, get the Luffy, the Sanji, and then try to get a 2K counter out of opponent's hand. That will be fine. Let him go. See how far the opponent wants to push us. Uh, we still have like the nine drop big mom, which is gonna be really important for this matchup, definitely. They have the Jinbe and a card that not a lot of people play. Uh, Gecko Moria. I mean, I don't think it's necessarily bad per se, but I don't think it's necessarily good either. Like it's an in-between car. I think he's very susceptible to removal. Maybe he's good against some matchups. Maybe even the mirror. I'm not entirely sure. 
Uh, but what I, can, what I can do is I can skip uh, the um, the leader ability to use the leader ability here going second, because next turn I can go to nine done either way with the, with the big mom, so it's not gonna matter too much. And then uh, this way, if he attacks with the Gecko Moria for like a huge number, I can take and then I can heal it back. And then it's not that big of a deal. Depending on what my opponent forces me to do, of course. Uh, this one I could take. This is fine. He goes give one done to this guy. Attack for six. That's three for seven, right? Then I'll take this one because if he double strikes me here, it doesn't matter. Um, now I do have. Uh, unfortunately, here I I do not get to nine, so I have to be careful for one turn. Uh, but doesn't mean that I cannot defend myself because I have the blast breads and all these cars, right? Um, so it should be fine. I'm just gonna play the uh, this guy. Attack for uh, eight at the boa. Wow, he's saving this one. Okay, no, I mean that's fine. It doesn't matter how many cars survive here. I'm just have to survive this turn, and it should be fine. I just need to make it to the big mom where I can heal, and then that that should be good enough. So ideally, I don't have to play the two blast breath, only one. Oh, he just goes save everything. Okay, that's fine. I mean, it doesn't really matter having this many attacks because um, I, I still have to defend out of all, all of them, so it doesn't really matter. I do want to keep the blocker if possible. So attacking for fives, just take like one car. It doesn't really affect the outcome here. Attack for seven. I'll use the blast breath because if he uses something to remove the, the kid, then... He really wouldn't be able to go for games, so it doesn't matter. Uh, the only card that I could have lost to here is the event that prevents you from getting unblockable. But if he has it, he has it. I couldn't really do anything about it. And then from here, I should be able to win if he's not able to kill me here. Again, if possible, I like to keep the blocker and not use an energy. Because that's going to be huge. Eight. Eight, we can block and combo out, which is huge actually, because it lets us have the blocker and lets us have the um, the extra life, which is huge. Then he goes bounce back the Zoro, which I don't really mind. Sure. So before I play the the card that I want to play, I want to see if he's gonna combo out of all of this. Then I'll attack the Jimbe, see if he combos. He didn't. Okay, perfect. So send that one to the bottom. Allows us to keep up the Blast Breath. And I can attack here. That's not that bad, bad, bad of a deal because uh, I do want to close the game fairly quickly. So dealing damage is going to be important. And I have a second Big Mom. So even if he does take this last life, I can just get it back next turn. So it's not that big of a deal. So depending on how many creatures he plays this turn, I mean, I, I should be able to get rid of the majority of them. And if he does a weak attack, then I can just combo out of that one, keep my life. If he does a big attack, then I can just take this last one. And then, uh, and then he has to hope that I don't have a second big mom, which unfortunately for him, I do. So... Yeah, I think I win this game uh, based on that. I'll attack this one. I don't know why he's trying to defend this one. He's going to die, of course. Then I go this one, minus one. Send the uh, boat bo to the bottom. Then I'll attack. I probably could skip the attack on the, uh, on the, um, on the, with the blocker. Because uh, now this is different. Uh, now I don't have a second big mom. Uh, because I don't have a second big mom, uh, if he puts me to zero and I'm not able to go for game next turn, 
uh, if I play a blocker and he has the card that prevents me from blocking, then I could just lose the game. So I will gladly just give out my uh, kid here uh, just so I don't go to zero. Uh, that could be a loose condition for me. So I definitely have to play around that. Uh, this point, uh, playing a Luffy is kind of pointless, to be honest. So I'm just going to attack the leader, see what he does. Because he cannot just take damage here. Oh, he is? Well, I can just go for game if he's going to do that. So I have to attack for 9. 9. You're going to take another 9. Yeah, that's, that's what I didn't think. So I'm going to take an 8. I can still attack for 8 at his leader. But I also don't need to because I have blockers and I have... Um, so he takes that one, and I can just go blocker, draw two. I like to play a little bit safe sometimes. And this is just perfect here. Double blocker, draw a lot of cards. And if whatever he does here, it doesn't matter because I'm, I'm going to be able to win. He's not going to kill me. He's not going to remove my board. And then um, there is no, like, a Connor alive or something, or you have enough Connor. Although I highly doubt he will have enough counter to survive that turn last turn, to be fair. But um, there is no there is no reason why I should just not take an extra turn to just win. It's not like we're in a rush, and this guarantees me the win. So this turn is they definitely cannot defend my turn next turn. So no reason not to do it. Here, it doesn't matter what he has. I, I can just attack for 10, 10, 10, and he doesn't have enough. He did have the unblockable. So I think he was looking for an opening, but just didn't give him one. So it was important. Okay, let's play against Zoro, which uh, could be a really difficult matchup, of course, because uh, they're very aggressive and they can get into the board very quickly. This does not seem to be a really like a regular Luffy list. If he would have kept one energy up, I wouldn't have attacked. But because he's playing this, um, I will have to assume he's trying to abuse the new white beer. So they're trying to just uh, minus my things and KO them with the white beer. And uh, I don't think that's a, a Zoro plan uh, necessarily. I mean, yeah, you can pump your things and do all of this, but I, I feel Zoro doesn't want to remove cards necessarily. It's not like he's um, his motto. He's more like an aggressive deck. He just doesn't really do this that efficiently. But uh, I'll take it. I mean, ooh, oh, he's going to attack with this one too. Well, that's bad then because how is he going to remove my things now? But I, I think he just wants to force the damage, which, I mean, it's fine. It's not that big of a deal. I could take a life. But if I take a life and I don't have the card that I need, it's kind of bad. So I can just also take it slow. Like, playing cards that draw themselves something, uh, it's just good enough. No, doesn't necessarily have to use... Um, I don't have to play something like the, this overly complicated game where, um, where I have to play two cards per turn. Like, you have to play different against, against aggressive decks because this leader does not necessarily bow it too well against aggressive decks. So... Uh, taking it slow is, is usually the better option here. Uh, my opponent's turn here, however, is going to be... Okay, so he has he's playing Jet Pistol as well. So he's, he's just, just a, a removal heavy Zoro deck. Which, again, I don't have any problems with. And I can just take my time just playing cards. The, like, two cards this turn and I'm going to be fine, right? I don't have to take my life. I can just take it slow here. Because they are not as fast to like uh, kill us super fast with this deck. What I think the deck is going to be. They don't have that many rushers. I don't think it's not, it's not going to be that aggressive. It's just going to have white beers. It's going to have the seven drop. I expect the seven drop to come down this turn. Uh, and maybe remove my Luffy. But sure. I mean the seven drop. It could be an issue. Um, a reason to play that like the Brook. Uh, in this deck instead of like something else but the problem is that brook doesn't have any counter and i could get dicey with that kind of type of cards okay so he's gonna pump them and attack for a big number seven seven is uh you can combo to that one so why not 
and then nine. Okay, so he's pushing the damage. But now this turn I have, <clears throat> I have a decent turn where I can just uh, force him to take some life, discard cards out of the opponent's hand. Ooh, that's huge. Attack for seven. Maybe I should have attacked for the eight. Well, okay, that's, this is good because now I can just play the blocker. What well, should play the blocker first? Yeah. Make him discard two. Attack for eight. And then I can play a second blocker. That allows me to draw two cards. And I could also keep up the... Um, the Blast Breath, which is not bad. Mm, mm, kind of a little bit exposed to some unblockable shenanigans. Um, hopefully that's not what he has. So we're going to try to block as efficiently as possible so the unblockable is not like an issue. Hopefully it's not. Like he doesn't have just randomly like three Zoros here. Um, or an unblockable. So he goes after uh, my my um, Nami. But that's fine. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. Because he's at one life. So he has to also defend himself. I will def I will just block this one, snap block. Wow, it's incredible that I, I have zero cards to combo with in my hand. Especially against Zoro. I'm like, uh, okay, here I can just block with one one K Connor. It's not that big of a problem. And oh I would could just let this one die, honestly. It's not something that I will cry over. Cause again, I can just take his low as well. Like I don't have to now I, I now I can keep up a, a bunch of done. Uh, so to keep up my t two blast breath, and I don't care if I don't go for game this turn. I don't have to go for game. I could, but like I, again, I, I don't just play around triggers. I jet pistol out of somewhere. Although I can play around jet pistol, but like radical beam plus some shenanigans kills me. While I don't have to lose this game on, on, on triggers or something like that. So I, I do always take my time uh, when I am ahead. Uh, and if you think I should have just gone for game. I understand that uh, if you like those kind of more quote unquote risky, like it is likely that you're going to win, but it's, I think it's just risky to do it because here I have two lives basically with my blockers and I have two blast breaths. So he's no chance in, at all that he's going to win this, this turn, whatever cards he's, he's going to draw. So, and this next turn is, is a guaranteed win for me. So there is no reason to, um, to risk it all when you can just wait one turn. It goes 12 it doesn't matter and then here it doesn't matter what the triggers are what they, they could have here because it's just not gonna save them yeah like look the diablo jumbo like if he survives somehow somewhere if he draws a diablo jumbo he puts me on one go for game it's, it's just not not something that i want to play I, like with all right and we have our matchup against bonnie um I mean, this matchup shouldn't be that bad, to be honest. Uh, I would like to go first. This deck really wants to go first, but um, I don't think it's that big of a deal necessarily. I do have to block. That's uh, maybe really decent card here. I have the Luffy, but I can also just do Magellan here, so it's not bad. Start Magellan, then I can do Luffy next turn. And then we go Big Mom the following. Feels like gaming to me. So hopefully this is going to be a, a good matchup for me. A good turn for, a game for me right now. Five. This is risky, but I think I should combo the Sanji. I could have probably combo the one that draws. Ooh, but that's double Luffy. That's actually pretty nice. Uh, all right, so I do have to attack this. He could block and then save her. I, a card that I don't have an answer for, however, is the A drop kid. And that could be a problem. Because if he at some point takes his own life, takes like 50 cards to hand, and, um, and plays a kid, and I can no actually KO it. That could be enough to lose the game. Since I have a second uh, Zoro Luffy, then playing this uh, Sanji is actually pretty nice. 
Okay, that's annoying because that's going to block some of my cards. I do want to draw cards here, however. Attack with this one. And then just play the Zoro. And then just keep drawing cards with this one. There's an argument to play the Zoro, but I mean, drawing cards is good, right? He plays more cards that I, if I don't answer, I feel like I'm ahead enough to where like I should answer this uh, baby once. It feels like something that I should be doing. He freezes the A drop. I mean, I could just let the Sanji die, honestly. I have a big mom, so it's not that bad. And we get a second one, so that's pretty decent. Uh, here, I'll attack. I mean, what I whatever I can attack, of course. And then attack this one. Then I'll attack the, put, the car. Oh, well, I'm, I guess I can just put him to his life. Not that bit. Not that bad, actually. Then my opponent goes. Uh, they have to play a 10 drop now. To lock everything down. That's bad. Because the problem will be if he plays a 10 drop and then plays a um, in an A drop uh, uh, blocker. Ooh, this is really bad if he does the play. I should have played a second big mom here, actually. That's on me. I think the play was definitely just play, attack with everything, play a second big mom. And then, yeah, he rip, rip two cards. It's, it's, it's okay, but I, I don't I don't think that's the play because if he has an A drop, I don't know how I am going to answer that. But the, also the other problem is if he plays a second 10 drop. Yeah, here I don't have an answer. Look. So what do I do? I do definitely want to draw some cards. So let's attack with this one first. See what I get. I was not worth it, honestly. Um... This, this blocker is a problem right now. But attacking for 10 is decent, I suppose. And then taking more cards out of my opponent's hand here. I mean, we don't have a bad uh, turn to answer this this uh, this guy. But the more blockers that he plays, the, the, the sleeper he gets for us. Uh, but I think if I can, I'm able to keep this, I mean, it's not like he can play another 10 drop, you not know, without someone tapping. This is where the Brook would have been really, really nice. And maybe a reason to play the Brook, honestly, because of uh, a drop kid. I mean, it's going to be part of the meta because um, Flamingo is part of the meta, right? So having an answer for this guy, it's really imperative. Especially since I'm going to have a huge board every time. And then if I'm able to just minus it and then attack it with whatever. Uh, it doesn't matter if I can tap my guy. I'm going to probably be able to either take his whole hand away. Or just be able to uh, KO it outright. And then uh, that's huge, right? That's uh, the huge difference here. Yeah, I, I get loop here. Like I cannot attack anymore. I guess I put this one on the live and then I'll attack for eight for nine. He taps my other guy, gives me a 2k Connor. He still has to deal me the last points of damage, I suppose. And I can always, yeah, you see, if I would have like the big mom from the beginning, if one turn ago I would have played the big mom, uh, I would have been in so, in a so much better position because that would have been three more attacks last turn, and then this turn I would have done two more attacks. Like, it would have been huge if I would have just played the big mom uh, instead of what I did. That definitely just wasn't the play. 
yeah, here he plays a Changs and he gets to do some shenanigans because, just because. And then... Highly doubtful that I'm gonna be able to survive two more turns of this. I mean, at least I probably should be able to remove this A-drop, hopefully. I go nine, 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 maybe. And then I play a blocker. Call it a day. See if maybe that's enough to survive. Oh, the Hori Jones. No. I could have maybe survived if without the Hori Jones, but on top of all of that, he had this Hori Jones. Nothing that I can really do there. He got me there. I think I would have still been able to win if I would have played the, the Big Mom instead. But yeah, I kind of messed up there, honestly. Okay, and we go against Katakuri. Uh, he's going first. Not great for us. Depending on what they have. or how great. This is a pretty aggressive one. Especially if they have like the Katakuri turn. But I think I have to take alive here yeah i have to i have to stop them from having like the katakuri blocker on top of this uh that could be really bad for me of course i could take all my life here and then just not have to worry about uh like any burn effect like because he's gonna play like a six drop next turn right because that's what i expect him to have like for now on so i can just take a little bit slower I don't, like I can Yeah, I'm not gonna take my own life. I'm not gonna ramp. But is that really that bad? I don't think so. I have my blocker. We have some Connor. And eventually I'm gonna be able to play like nine drop big mom. And if all the effects that say uh burn are not active, I'm okay with that, right? Uh he combos, he makes me combo with something. Uh I guess I have to combo with one Nami. Well I didn't have to, but I'll do it I guess. I'll attack with this one. Attack with this one. Uh, with seven done, I can just play a kid and see what happens. See if he has another removal for kid. Six. I do have a Connor. Seven. Uh, I can combo and then I can do blast breath on this one. That'll be exactly. So that will deal with some of this board. And then um, two, four, I, I cannot attack with this. I don't think so. But I can do this so I can. Um, oh, the Luffy is not. It has to be the 2K counter, right? I mean, this is not bad because I can get to play another dude and then play like the Nami. But also getting like the 2k counter was kind of correct there. But here I do have the heal if I want to. Oh, I should have healed, honestly. This is super risky. It's actually honestly a bad play on my end. I should have just healed. Oh, but uh, the problem is that he's coming with tender big mom. That's why I didn't heal. Because that uh, that was the big mom turn. And if he goes for it... Like, I wanted to see what, what he was going to do here. That's why I didn't heal. Um, I mean, I, again, it, it could be bad uh, to do it this way. But that's what I, that's what I end up doing. <laughs> now, I want to see if he uh, drops any KO abilities here. I do not want to heal him. Whoa, wait. I... Again, the problem is that he does have a lot of uh, burn abilities. So healing is not the best option. Always. It's an option. I just want to... 
yeah, because look, I'd rather do this right now. Double blocker. Like, I, they could have the one that taps your blocker. I don't know if I played this, this matchup the best that I could. Uh, this is nothing, but I guess I can block it. Uh, I suppose that one I can block and attempt to go for game next turn. I could just also not keep the blocker and just heal, right? Because that's not bad. Because even if he does have a burn next turn, depending on what the burn card is. That's another reason, because I remember him putting the card on the bottom of the deck. So, um, I was expecting some uh, some amount of, like, either Beige or the Zero event. So, I didn't really want to go for game that way. Now, this kind of forces my hand a little bit. But he only has one card in hand. And we know the last card doesn't do anything. So unless he gets something out of the top two cards here that it stops me, uh, I should be okay. Uh, I don't know why he played that one. <laughs> so this has to be something. It is not. So we get to win. Not entirely sure I played this the most correctly, honestly. Um, there are some points where I could have lost to one card or another. Which is likely that they could play some some of those cards, like the, the tap, your four or less blocker. Uh, but I was also trying to play around, like, if, if I heal with the 9-drop, then um, a 10-drop Big Mom just denies that heal as, as well. So it's not that great. But uh, uh, it could have also been really good because um, I then, then I have blockers for that. I feel like I, I should have done better on this one. But I didn't also want to heal a, a trigger. I don't know. It's, it's kind of like um, like a 50-50 on that end. Uh, but I, I do think I could have done better on this one. All right. And for the final thoughts on this deck, um, doesn't matter how you customize this deck. I think um, the, the core of the deck is always going to be this, and this is what's important. So it's definitely like a five-star leader because of this new core that is playing. Uh, allows you to play a runs removal very well, gives you card advantage, like being able to draw cards with those two cards that you play here. Like it allows you to keep going. Uh, you don't have to always take your own life. Now you have more options. Definitely a, a good uh, improvement over the uh, different iterations of the deck before and um, worth exploring uh, even further into like different options that you can do with this deck. But with that being said, that's all I have for today. Thank you all for watching. Have a good one.